Hello, everyone on YouTube, and good morning. You might be wondering, just what in the hell is this beast on the bench today? This is a new to me format. This has been overdue for quite some time, it feels like. This is a Quasar Great Time Machine VCR, the VR1000. This plays back uh, Quasar VX tapes. Now, I don't have an actual tape on my person to show you what it looks like, because uh, what I'm going to do first on this unit is get everything up to spec, uh, get do all the mains that I will need to do now before I even apply power, because this thing does need maintenance. This VCR would have been from, I think, 77-ish. So it's almost 50 years old, and it's probably has not been used since like the early 80s tops. So, so for a VCR of this vintage, you do need to go inside and do all the, uh, and just check it out. Now, I did do a preliminary check in my, uh, in my room and I do know this thing needs a belt I did order what should be an appropriate substitute for that belt but I'm but I'll show you what I'm talking about when I uh, open that up now the story behind this unit this was an eBay find I mean chances are that's gonna be your one place to find these VCRs I am doubtful that you would be able to you have to be very lucky to find these at, like an estate sale or a uh, antique thrift store. Basically, just out in the wild in general. So you are more likely going to have to get these off of eBay, which is what I did in this case. Thank you, PayPal, paying for. <laughs> so this VCR came with almost everything. It came with the box. Yes, I have a the box to this beast. It came with the instruction manual. It came with five two-hour tapes. So that brings me at six tapes on my person that I can uh, go through when I get this thing working. And more, because uh, if you... Let's see, if you're watching this channel, you probably know uh, the media hoarder on YouTube. The Japanese VX tapes that he has been uploading... Those, I am the uh, owner of those, and I shipped them right to him from the Zen Market Warehouse because I wanted them transferred, you know, immediately. So he and I will have to work out, you know, what which ones I get and which ones he can keep because I do want him to keep, I do want him to keep some since, you know, as kind of payments for uh, doing the transferring and because, you know, I can trust him with... Uh, you know, rare stuff like that. So, getting these units apart, you have to take the side panels off. And, I did not do that. I don't know how I could mess that up. So, switch, switch there. And these pa side panels, you gotta push back. And they should just. Well. <laughs> That's one way to do it. What the heck was going on? Something must have been. It might have just been sticking back there. Okay, so I hope this side comes off a easier. Let's get, let's get out my yogurt container for these screws. Okay, 
Yeah, I'm gonna have better luck with this one. With this side panel. There we go. That came off easier. You see. So these two going back, and I'm wondering if they were just like if the padding on those are just sticking. Because this unit is in like near mint condition. So how the seller shipped the unit, he of course put you know the unit and the uh, tapes manual that in the original box, and then you know he knew to uh, put that all in uh, in a proper shipping box. He padded the sh he pat he like spared no expense at like padding the the box up because. The, the overall weight of the UPS package was 80 pounds. <laughs> and so he used, you know, newspaper bubble wrap. He, to, he, he insulated the box with four blankets and a yoga mat. So now I have four blankets and a yoga mat that I don't know what I'm going to do with. And my coworkers said that they don't need them, so... Uh, So right now, I'm using one of the blankets to wrap the covers with, just so they don't get scratched or anything. Because this unit, I will be, you know, naked for a while until uh, the belt I work comes in. Okay, so get the wood panel off. There's just two screws in the back. That's easy enough. You have to, in the end, you're going to see the oddest thing about this format. So, you can see this here, this little knob that you can slide, you know, back and forth. When you play, when you, what am I going to say? To insert and a tape, you push this a little, and then a very violent mechanism then you just pop that down and then you slide this because how the tapes work is the tapes are stacked the uh it's a half inch tape but the reels are stacked on top of each other so the cassette is like thick as all hell and the actual drum there was a there's a little opening with a spool the drum goes in that slot and what this does, so this is at the beginning, is by turning this this way, you are removing the uh, plastic cover for the for the uh, tape, and that is getting you know wrapped around the drum. That's what this action does when you move this uh, switch to the right. Do it to the left. You're undoing that, and you can eject the tape. And with the cover, with the basket out, you can safely get the wood panel out of the way. And you can barely see here. If you watch Meteor Hoarders, uh, uh, he's showing the back of the unit in that video. He is, it's that same tag where it's, this quasar cabinet is finished. With a simulated wood grain exterior, federal law prohibits removal of label except by consumer. So it even comes with that, which is really neat. Basically, the one thing this unit did not come with, uh, there's a, uh, what do I want to say? It's like a little tag, uh, again, in the media horror's uh, video when he's showing it working, he shows that tag. That's like the one thing this unit did not come with. If it came with that, I could say this unit was complete in box. But you, know, you can't you can't win them all, I guess. I am going to want to take the front cover off at some this off at some point. Because there's a board here. And to swing the board up, you need this saw. So I think I should do that now. 
apologies. Because I think this has to be out of the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, this should just. Okay, so. So this part just slides out, and now you see the naked switch. It's a tight grip. There we go. Just use a little flathead screwdriver to ease. And I do mean ease these knobs off. I also, because I also want to. I obviously don't want to damage anything, given how minty this unit is. Okay, so this is a button here, a little switch, and this is a well a button that controls the dehumidifier that this unit comes with. It's that thing there. That's the power transformer. That's the dehumidifier. So it turns it on, off. Switch for black and white and color recording. So playback it will automatically select the yeah. it'll know if the picture's in color or not. So and this ship should come off. Because I believe behind one of these switches is a hidden screw. Okay well that comes off. But that's the rest of it. Yes, it does. Okay, and that comes off as a whole. Now we got all the knobs off that would be in the way otherwise. So now I see it. So un so in this here, so this hole here, where the knob for the whatever the hell used to be. I'm sorry, I uh, I collect, you know, vintage video gear, but at the end of the day, I'm still a 25-year-old who grew up <laughs> with, like, Nickelodeon Cartoon Network in the 2000s, so I don't know, I still am not sure identifying what was UHF and VHF, but for the whatever the hell down here, there is a hidden screw underneath one of the knobs, and that has to come off in order to get this panel off, and, I, and it's also backed up by the fact that there's an arrow in the, you know, pointing at the screw, kind of like how Sony did their gear with the, with indicating what screws have to get off in order to like remove, remove covers and all that. So let's give it an upgrade. So with that screw now out of the way, the only th ones we have left, there's here and here. So yeah, that's what it would like. Okay, so there goes those two screws. So should now be able to just, because I don't think there are any screws on this on the bottom. Oh wait, they're actually, hold on there, I, I think there are. Uh, I'm having second thoughts. So, should be able to just 
get it on side like this. Nice and easy. This is pushing the limits. <laughs> that is like just about the height of my my bench here. Oh geez, you can't see that. Oh geez. Okay, so this is the unit right side up. Yeah, okay, so we got a bunch of screws here for the front cover. However, well, I got this out here. Might as well get the bottom cover off and show you uh, all the insides of that. And close it. Oh, the, the foot might be in the way there. Okay, the screws right here in the in one of the feet there. So. Here and the screw there that I didn't put in all the way. I'm looking back constantly because I want to make sure you guys can see when can actually kind of see this. So, bottom cover. Can just slide off like that. Yeah, the feet stay on because they're attached uh, separately. They're attached to this, to the, like the actual metal chassis. So, here is I don't want to say main board, but here's where a bunch of the magic happens because this is where should be where the color video happens. I have the service manual to this thing, uh, so I fortunately have that to fall back on in identifying everything. But let's see, is there anything I can make out now? Like, can I see? See, I see four point. Two seven megahertz. Interestingly, um, there is Japanese on the board here, so <laughs> uh, I don't know why they didn't change the language for the uh, <coughs> for the American VCR. Because <coughs> there is in Japan, there were two models. One I still have not seen, the National VX one hundred, and the second, which is the exact same thing as this, but you know, with the Japanese voltages and uh, tuners, is the National VX2000. So, it makes sense if you got Japanese on for your Japanese VCR, but for American, you know, for the American equivalent, where American technicians will be working on it, I don't know why you wouldn't just, uh, why you wouldn't make a different printing, but I guess, I don't know, it's not like the, obviously there's, format, you know, kind of fell flat on its ass, you know, the moment it came out in America and even Japan, so it's not like it mattered all that much, but still I'm looking to see if I can find something that says like you know, 3.58 megahertz, so whatever would be the color for the, the uh, chroma I'm not seeing anything but 4.27 megahertz, that sounds like something that would be used for, uh, I believe the word, the term is heterodyning. That sounds like what it would be used for. Or for like uh, demodulating the video, possibly. But I don't know. I don't know the uh, specifics of this format. So, with this, I'll need a bigger bit. Is any different? So, the swing for this circuit board here, this is on a hinge, and it's held down in place by two screws that you don't need to take out. You just need to fully, you just need to undo them until you can get the board to move. Don't, don't want a fingernail under there. Jeez, it'll get ripped off. Okay. Got 
Boom. Oh, and there we go. In lieu of having the ring light out here, I'm just going to use the flashlight on my phone and just point about it is bo the board want, does not want to stay put. There we go. Okay, that's something. Yeah, so you kind of have a decent view. I can at least point things out. So, as you see, you got a bunch of crap going on over here. You got a little bit of blank space there. And then you have another board here. Up here is the power supply board. Uh, you got the fuse. You have a big wire for the uh, transformer. Or at least I'd be coming out of the transformer, which is just up here. The belt that's missing, it is this here. There is no belt here. The corpse of the old belt is still there. However, it, uh, eventually, it, for lack of a better term, disintegrated. Um, this is the head drum. Everything, the capstan, the uh, spools, are connected by one main motor, which is here. I did not show the top, but I'm turning the main motor, maybe you can see this wheel here turning. So, this, it's like the, uh, you know, this is an early VCR, so this is, it's just like a similar principle to something like the Sony uh, early pneumatic VCR, so top loaders, you know, which is what I have, where everything is like connected to a main motor, and then you got different size pulleys, you know, connected to other to all these, you know, different things, capstans, the drum, the yeah, head drum, all that stuff. So that's how that works. You have a, a two millimeter square square belts going. To here, this is for, I believe that is for the spools. Well, I can't see from here. <laughs> so you got a two millimeter square belt going here. It's a big guy too, uh, big as in diameter. You have, it's hard to tell, but where my finger is, this is the flywheel to the capstan, and that is put on backwards it looks like if i turn the wheel the motor clockwise the capstan goes counterclockwise so that's how so they got it hooked up in reverse And that's run on a uh, very large flat belt. And the drum, the, the video drum, is also another large uh, flat belt. Now, I contacted uh, one of my pals on Facebook who lives in uh, the Bronx. He has at least uh, one unit that he was uh, looking to get fixed. And I asked him if he knows of any, you know, of the measurements for any of the belts because I don't really have a way, I don't really know what belt size it would take. And it would take like approximating, you know, approximating the, uh, you know, the distance and, and all that to, to guess what kind of belt size I might need. And he, responded and he showed a message that he sent to another uh, person on Facebook with another one of these units that he was looking to get up and running. Uh, this gentleman had, you know, given me, he sh well, he sent a screenshot of the message he sent uh, showing the appropriate, approximate uh, PRB equivalents to these belts. And so I looked up on eBay yesterday uh, for the belts, for the two flat belts, and I bought, and I found them from a supplier in California, and so I bought both. 
and uh, they have not been shipped yet. But uh, you know, I'll give them. Some, I mean, I'll give them some time. It's you know, I order them Sunday after all. So I'm hoping that that one of those will be a good fit for this. So in the meantime, I'm just going to do the maintenance, you know, all around here and on the top. I haven't even shown you the actual mechanism yet. I'm just, you're just seeing the bottom side, which, you know, a lot to take in, obviously. But uh, things that I will have to do, I will have to inspect. Not inspect. Well, there's one belt. So there's, you see there's a motor here. Maybe. Kind of. There's a 7 volt motor there, and that's connected to a belt down here. And the square, it's, this one's just like a one millimeter square belt. <clears throat> it's, it's rather small compared to everything else. It's not two, I mean, not two millimeters. But that, it's hard to tell. Belt maybe good, but at the very least, I think it should get rejuvenated with some rubber renew. Assuming it has still has a good shape, I can see the belt moving if I move this spool here. So, there should be some grip on that. There should still be some value, and I'm going to rejuvenate, as in put rubber renew on the re the other two belts here. This one's just for the uh, counter, this belt. So I'm not worried about that belt at all. Uh, this here, this, you can't really see. There's a little wheel there with like stripes on it. And what this does, that's where the actual spools turn. And there's a little sensor there that detects the uh, frequencies at the frequency at which, you know, the stripes uh, reflect back light. And that's how it determines if there's any issues with, like, the uh, tape stock. Like, if it's exerting too much to get the uh, tape moving. That's about it for the underside of the unit here. So I'll just... So I'll just talk about this. Things terrible. Too much. Does it just Shit. Of course, when I get one in the slot, the other has to fall off. There we go. Okay. Now, back again, the front off. Always screws up. Whoa. Okay, so I got those four screws off. Now I'm going to very gently lay this back down. Right onto somebody. No chassis. To ease it up down. Okay, so now I should hopefully just pop off. See your wires tied off, tied to the uh, front here. So I think I got it get off. Okay, yeah. Off. Okay. I just plug them from this here. Okay, and now I can get this uh, lid off. And how you do that? So there are two tabs on the back of this. When I took this off in my room, one of the tabs broke off. At least I didn't lose it. So theoretically, I can at least reattach that. So I hope that getting the other one off, I won't pop. Got one foot off the bench here. It's hard. Okay. 
Jeez. Why can't I get that off? Okay. So, again, there was only one tab remaining, so I just popped that off, and this thing just popped right up, exerting for, you know, like force upward. Okay, I got to pop off. If you're not a total idiot like I am, and you didn't damage the, uh, one of the tabs, then you would have to, you know, do the classic, exert, you know, keep like pressure on this up while you pop that off and what have you. But, uh, or if you can manage it, you can like do both at the same time. So this is where the tape goes. Here is the board. On this board, this board ha should handle tracking and audio, I believe. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that will, that will be for audio, because the audio is, the audio on this, this is linear only, so you do need to bias the audio, uh, because I refer you to uh, literature on ma magnetic video recording as to why you need to bias linear audio before you get it on the tape. But uh, the... You know, this, the short answer is it's be, if you didn't bias the audio, the audio would be extremely distorted and weak. So, uh, yeah, look here. So, here is the head drum. And it's, you know, quite a small thing. And what's interesting about this format is it is a one head unit. So there is only one video head. However, if you watch uh, the upload from the, the uh, media hoarder, you would see that it still records at the uh, original frame rate, as in it's getting both fields of onto the tape with just the one head. So that's so that's really interesting because I mean something like V chord, which is with V chord and at least in the long play. You can't, it can only record at the uh, skip field. But this one, with only one head, manages to record at uh, 60 frames per second, which is which is pretty, pretty neat. So, get this coming out of the way. Two screws here that hold down the audio board. This flips up to show. Oh god, those wires are stiff as hell. I'm not gonna be able to flip this back all the way. God damn it. So, so one thing this unit was advertised is it advertised that the power switch would not stay down. So this guy here. And I verified in the uh, in my room that that's the case. However, I also got to a point where the power switch stayed down and wouldn't come back up until I like did some magic. So something something must be sticking there. Powers, I see it activating the switch. Something mechanically must have popped off. So I get it to stay down the first time. Okay. But now I got it to stay down. Okay. 
I just fling it violently. That part's sticking. Ah. I think I see what it is. I see a switch here. That's that's sticking. Yeah, that got gummed up. Aha. Uh -huh. Because. God damn it. Oh, and that's how it would. Something mechanically still go is still the matter, but that's why the power switch won't stay on. Okay, so I found why the power switch is sticking here. There's a little it's a little I don't know what you call it. There's a tab here where there's a metal piece extending out that rides this and what should be happening is it should do that where it goes in this crevice here and then when you turn it off it should that's what it should be doing it should always want to go uh, to the it's supposed to be like going to the left but it's sticking. So, so if you see it reacted too slow, that's why it won't. The power switch won't stay down because mechanically, the uh, switch, the little tab that holds this switch in place, is coming undone. So that's one issue solved and. I realized why I couldn't press these down. You're gonna laugh. That's supposed to be here, and then these, the other switches will become free. Of course, granted, the power switch is down. Now you can actually go through the rest. Because what we're basically doing is we're telling the, because the machine mechanically and electronically, because there's a little switch here that the uh, lever like bumps into. Now the machine is being told the switch, the tape is loaded and it's ready to go. Now you could push play and all that shit. Uh, can you see? Yeah, so, and, is there any sticking? Nope. So this is fast forward. With rewind, I see something there. Ah, okay. Now I see how that mechanism works. Should be using a regular Schmegler screwdriver because I don't want the so these are the spools the top so the black one here is for the take up the bottom white one here is the supply. So, in regular play, this here is the pinch roller, and you see the solenoid. So, there would be more solenoid action going on to actually press the pinch roller up to the capstan. But yeah, but uh, you need you know power to do that, and I'm just doing this all you know uh, unplugged. So, get. Playoff. 
So for the rewind, there is an idler wheel down here. Because every with play, uh, I believe this guy is what does the bulk of the work for playback. And I won't be able to see how that works until I actually plug this unit in. But for rewind, for rewind to get the bottom reel to move, you see this link here? This link moves when you press down on the rewind, and the either wheel will be pressed up against the supply wheel, and then that will uh, act, be, uh, and then the rewind action will take place. That's how rewind works, and I'm going to be very nervous about how exposed that head is <laughs> until I get this unit back together. Jeez, if feels really exposed so that's how rewind works okay so that's interesting to actually be able to see up in person so because my battery's about to die this might be a good stopping point for me in recording this uh, I hope some of it can actually get on YouTube because I had an issue last time when I was trying to uh, upload a video so Yeah, and the uh, spool, the little wheel with all the uh, indents there, that's, can you, I don't think you can see that because you got like a perfect bird's eye view, but that's, that is how the uh, cover for the tape comes undone. That's what that action does. So, now let me get that switch. I think that will do it for this round, just for initial inspection. So I'll, so I'm still, still, as in I ordered it yesterday. So the belt for the head drum, I'm waiting on that to come in. And uh, I would like to get a bulk of the maintenance done on this so that I can just fire it up uh, once I get the belt. I would like to actually record myself doing the basic maintenance. Uh, you can look uh, at Rene Gonzalez's channel to see a good explanation of the maintenance for yourself by a guy who actually has had his hands on some of these units. This, again, is my first. This will be my first outing with this format. So, uh, battery's about to die. I hope you at least somewhat enjoyed this video, that you, saw, that you uh, got a little something out of this. So... I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.